Sometimes movies leave us breathless, and sometimes it's the characters who have a hard time breathing. Can't, can't. Got to save it for the transfer. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten running out of oxygen scenes in movies. I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Without your space helmet, Dave, you're going to find that rather difficult. For this list, we're looking at the scenes in cinema where people's lives are on the line. The air is thin, and the stakes are as high as they get. Beyond the standard one scene per movie limit, we're leaving the list open to all potential entries, as long as the scenes in question contain someone losing oxygen and struggling to survive. What happened to the oxygen? A spoiler alert is probably in order. We have to make our way to the space station. Over there. Number ten, buddy breathing, sanctum. We got a buddy breathing. We got a buddy breathing. All right. Mask Sometimes the bond of friendship just isn't enough. At least that seems to be the case here. Frank, get me to the air. This is so far. We'll never make it. You get back. Come on, Frank. Come on, Frank. Get me to the air valve. During a diving excursion, Frank notices fellow diver Jude's tank seems a little off, and then the oxygen hose comes loose. All right, you got a bit of a leak. Let me take a look. What do you mean? Wait. The two scramble to act as Jude's begins suffocating, even going so far as to start sharing a breathing mask. Frank, don't do it. We're gonna lose you both. However, in her panicked state, Jude starts hogging the mask. Frank needs to make a tough decision to ensure they don't both die down there. Of course, with his team watching on a monitor, he'll have some difficult questions to answer later. See, he just fucking yanked some mask away from her. Number nine, one final gambit, Event Horizon. Shit! What the fuck am I going? Why is this shit gonna happen to me? When in doubt, resort to extreme measures. All right, all right, all right. I get back to ship. I get back to ship. All right. It's probably this line of thinking that drives Cooper, a crew member on the Lewis and Clark vessel, when he is left floating in space after a ship's destruction. <laughs> Clinging to one part of the ruined craft, terrified and with limited oxygen in his spacesuit remaining, Cooper makes the decision to reroute his oxygen. And use it as propulsion to get back to the titular ship, Event Horizon. Oh, this better work. This is better work. Right. Right. It's a dangerous maneuver, but we respect him for making it. Come on, yes, yes, yes. Here I come, motherfucker! Number eight, a friendly chat, gravity. Beautiful, don't you think? What? The sunrise. Though Kowalski's eventual return is just as powerful a moment. It's a little gloomy in there, isn't it? How did you? Trust me, it's a hell of a story. But how did you? There is a sort of beauty in this oxygen-deprived conversation between colleagues. Kowalski and Stone, played by George Clooney and Sandra Bullock respectively, float through space after a disastrous series of events. Explore's been hit. Explore. As their oxygen supply dwindles. Kowalski tries to keep things light, asking Stone about home, habits, and her loved ones. She was at school playing tag, slipped, hit her head, and that was it. What follows is a heartfelt confession from Stone, whose soul-bearing monologue is both moving and a sign that things won't get any easier from here. I wake up, I go to work, and I just drive. Number seven, Houston. We have a problem. Apollo 13. Houston. We have our dog. Based on a true story, Apollo 13 chronicles the efforts of three astronauts placed into an unenviable situation. Gentlemen, it's been a privilege flying with you. Immediately after a public broadcast, three days into their mission to land on the moon, Mission Control asks Apollo's crew to go over their spacecraft's functions and test everything per a standard procedure. Hey, we've got a problem here. What did you do? Nothing. I stirred the tanks. And since this is unlucky Apollo 13 we're talking about, why wouldn't a technical malfunction occur? One of the two oxygen tanks explodes, firing fear in everyone present. 
the astronauts, their mission support team, and the audience. You don't tell me how to fly the damn CM, all right? You don't they brought me know, in here do to do a job. They asked me to stir the damn tanks, and I stir the tanks! Dad. Stop kicking yourself in the ass. This is not my fault! However, we do get an iconic line out of the ordeal. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Number six, brutal decompression, total recall. Yeah! Simple, but fitting. Late in the events of this Schwarzenegger classic, the villainous Governor Kohagen gets thrown out of an airlock and onto the surface of Mars. Thus, we are privy to a villain's brutal demise, as he quickly succumbs to the lack of breathable air. While the scene is rather short, the cartoon-like way in which Kohagen's face puffs up is certainly memorable, if not entirely pleasant to watch considering his evil deeds. Number 5. Breaking Out, Angels and Demons Why did they shut down the system? They know we're down here. How much do you suppose Robert Langdon wants to retire after this? There's no power. There's no oxygen. Can we get out? The door is electronic. Midway through an investigation into the theft of antimatter, the iconic Tom Hanks character and a Vatican guard find themselves trapped inside the Vatican archives. Well, that's disappointing. With their air supply cut off and the archives surrounded by bulletproof glass walls, you can see the desperation increase as their consciousness fades, even as Langdon makes a game effort of trying to escape. <laughs> Hang in there, Professor. <laughs> Number 4. Pool's Spacewalk, 2001 A Space Odyssey The pod bay doors won't be opening this time. Poor Frank Poole. This astronaut could not have known that by going on a spacewalk, he was exposing himself to a cutting blow by an AI-controlled pod. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. His friend, Dave Bowman, has to watch as Poole is separated from his oxygen line and sent spiraling through space. The worst part is this. Even as Dave sees Poole grasping for air, the shipboard artificial intelligence HAL 9000 refuses to allow Dave to intervene. After all, HAL was the one who killed Frank. What are you talking about, HAL? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Number 3. Gallagher's Discovery, Red Planet Dizziness, skin will tingle, vision narrows, then shock. This one was a close call. Sometime after touching down on the Red Planet, the crew of the Mars One ship finds themselves running short of breathable air. I'm gonna go over here, take a walk. Gallagher, oxygen supply depleted. The remaining astronauts all assemble and prepare for their demise. It's actually fairly depressing, watching as three trained space explorers slowly accept their impending doom. Replace row two canister immediately. Gallagher starts to succumb to suffocation first and removes his helmet, only to breathe in that sweet, sweet Martian air. I can breathe. I can breathe. That's quite the convenience, but we expect he is not complaining. I don't know what the hell this is. But I'll take it. Number two, Noble Sacrifice, The Abyss. Okay, let's rock and roll. Heroism isn't dead, but did it really have to come at this cost? In James Cameron's 1989 film The Abyss, estranged couple Virgil and Lindsay Brigman find themselves knee deep in a slowly flooding submarine. So I've got a plan. What's the plan? <laughs> I drowned and you tow me back to the rig. No, no. The situation only gets worse as Lindsay does the mental math and realizes there's no feasible way to save them both without sacrifice. Lindsay's choice to drown in the hope that she can be revived later, while Virgil takes the remaining diving suit and swims for help, is certainly brave. But that makes it no less tragic to watch unfold. No! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I, I swear I have to go. Please come home to me. <laughs> Yeah, brother. Okay, hold, hold, uh, please, please. 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 
Suffocating. Tony, tell Jim. Get us out of here. Stop eating your oxygen, damn you. Be still. Number one, Dr. Mann versus Cooper, Interstellar. <laughs> Two men grapple, only one man leaves. That's the setup for this scene in Interstellar, a rolling fight between Matt Damon's Dr. Hugh Mann and Matthew McConaughey's noble engineer Joseph Coop Cooper, both of whom want to prevent the other from leaving the icy planet they're on. But uh, I knew that if I just pressed that button, then somebody would come and save me. Hey, coward. Mann prevails in the fight, though, as he fractures Cooper's helmet just enough to leave his former comrade suffocating. Those are the best thoughts I've had in years. As Coop struggles with his apparent final breaths, we get a dose of introspection from Man, who establishes himself less as a villain and more as a flawed individual. It's what drives all of us, and it's what's going to save us. Because I'm going to save all of us for you, Cooper. The scene's not bold or bombastic, but it gets the job done enough for a number one spot on our list. Cooper, we're coming. Hang in there. Don't talk. Try to breathe as little as possible. We're almost there. Do you agree with our list? You did it, Ace! <laughs> what oxygen-deprived scenes do you enjoy? For more breathtaking top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.